Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the weekly chart of silver and first majestic silver. The bar chart, candlestick chart is first majestic and the line chart is silver. So we pointed out before that this uh, disparity here that we recently had, obviously you can see the chart goes back to 2009, but or, I'm sorry, 2003, but um, you can go even further back. But the point is, is that uh, no matter where we go on this, there's nothing been uh, this wide of a disparity in the past. And now you can see what is happening. We're actually getting a sell-off here. You can see that the price of First Majestic touched that 25 price. That was uh, not quite into new highs. Uh, or very, very close to them. I can't tell. I think actually the old high was 25.79. So didn't break into new highs. And you can see the reversal there. A big, big down week from about 24 down to below 20 and then another drop. And you can see this gap. This arrow is pointing to that gap breakout. And that is partially filled. Now, You'll see a lot of times in markets, I point out many times how markets abhor a vacuum, they abhor a gap because that means the trading didn't occur at those prices and they definitely tend to try to fill those gaps. So we could get a reversal and then much higher from there. But uh, this reversal here with silver going down, this could be a real big fake out. In fact, this entire rally could have been a big fake out. We're going to look at an article about the silver miners and the investment in the mining stocks versus the um, the real thing in a minute here. But uh, I wanted to take you to a story on the national debt. Now, I always like to get the facts here on the national debt, and I pointed out that we've had a change. If you remember, they, they changed the legislation so that there was no longer a debt ceiling, but they just kind of made it a time limit and they can just expand up to as high as they want until the time limit's over and then they have to reassess things. So basically they have a, uh, a blank check. Now you can see the pattern I pointed out in the past that we look at August of 2015, you can see that from that period and it goes way back it went for a very long time at this 18151 and you can see 18152 that resolves right there uh, a month after the end of the fiscal year and you can see the huge jump started October 30th now the difference this year is we don't have that period where it stays steady uh, it, it's rising and rising rapidly now you can see we're up to 19446 so we got to 19.4 on the 11th of August, and uh, well, we did it first back here, but uh, now we're uh, almost up to 19.5 trillion. So at 19.5 trillion, um, we're approaching that 1.4 trillion in uh, in deficit, 1.4 trillion dollars a year. Now compare and contrast those facts and those are the facts I'm just giving you the numbers from a year ago and the numbers today compared to this article on Benzinga but it's citing a CNN money article US government spending cut to lowest level in decades national debt rises anyway hmm according to CNN money the amount of spending the US federal government overseas is actually sitting at a multi-decade low. Really? Let's see how they finagle this. CNN Money citing Congressional Budget Office reported on Monday that within 10 years, defense and domestic spending is on pace to decline the lowest level as a percentage of GDP dating back to 1962. So, defense and domestic spending. Uh, so, right there, the, it's misleading. Uh, U.S. government spending cuts, that's just part of the government. And we're going to see here that it's not the biggest part. It's not it actually becoming a much smaller part than it has ever been, which is scary because what most of us traditionally think of as the functions of government, which is defense and the actual running of the agencies that do the things that government does, 
whether that's the the police, the FBI, uh, just the the IRS, just the things that everyday functions that government does, those are the things they're talking about here, and those are the ones that are shrinking. And why are they shrinking? They're shrinking because of entitlement spending. They say the problem is the reduction in spending will come from discretionary aspects of the budget, including military, national parks, museums, and food safety related initiatives. On the other hand, spending on the real debt drivers or entitlement programs, such as health care programs, social security, and interest on debt, hasn't received the level of attention it warrants. In fact, within 20 years, the CBO said that nearly every single tax, penny of tax revenue the government will collect will only be sufficient to cover entitlement spending and interest payment on debts. Meanwhile, CNN Money added that neither Donald Trump nor Hillary Clinton have proposed a solution of how to deal with the alarming rates of entitlement spending. So you can see here we're approaching a point in time where 100% of the tax revenues, we're actually very, very close right now because we're running that $1.4 trillion deficit that they won't admit. But 100% of the money is going to go is going to be taking money from one person and handing it to another. And that's very, very near the end of the system because the people they're taking the money from aren't getting anything from it. They're just simply having their money taken and given to someone else. They're not getting any benefits. And uh, people aren't going to put up with that. So the thing I wanted to talk about here is this GDP argument. Now, we know that they're rigging the GDP. And if you think about it, it's just common sense. If the GDP were actually growing and the GDP was causing people to earn more or companies to make larger profits, you would see the tax revenues increase. And they're not increasing anywhere near the spending is increasing. Like I said, we have nearly a $1.4 trillion deficit that we're running, which is approaching the worst that we had during the financial crisis. And they're telling us that the GDP is expanding, but I don't believe it is. And I think the proof is in the pudding that they have to continue to increase the size of the deficit tells me that they're lying about the GDP. And if they weren't lying about the GDP, we'd actually see tax revenues from that GDP. But the GDP is fake. And we have the Federal Reserve buying more and more debt. We have the Bank of Japan buying stocks. We have the Swiss Bank, Central Bank, buying stocks. We have central banks basically buying up all the assets of the world to keep this system from collapsing. But it's going to collapse. I'm becoming more and more convinced every day that it's probably going to collapse either before the election or after the election. But sometime around the election, I think, is when we're going to get that collapse. Now, I want to go back to that issue of the miners, and this is an article from Silver Doctors about the HUI. Uh, the title is, The HUI is the New Gold and Silver Spot Price. Spot Price is Dead. The spot price for gold and silver is dead. We seem to have the makings of a major disconnect, and it's worth talking about. The mining indices are raging, while the spot price markets are looking more and more like the ugly stepsister nobody wants to dance with. Billions of dollars are flowing into gold and silver miners, yet all the while PM prices continue to lag, largely because it is set by traditional flawed paper derivatives dinosaurs. Regardless of how or why this is occurring, deliberate plan or free market, one thing seems evident. The HUI is the new spot price and the spot price is dead. So the contention is that the way that in real investors are investing in the precious metals is just going straight into the miners because the actual physical metal price is rigged. I have some serious doubts about that and I think that this thing could end in tears. It could end very, very badly if the people who believe that you should invest in miners are taken to, to the cleaners one last time. So let's read this part here, part three. Is this real or just another tricksy trick? There's another possible permutation for these observations that is worth noting 
and discussing, though admittedly this is not for the faint of heart. Murph first pointed out to me months ago the strange juxtaposition of A, the miners responding to every dip as strong as mustard gas, yet B, short interest on the comics growing and growing until it has reached epic proportions at times, though it has pulled back somewhat of late, still this is a possible scenario. As Murph recently said, quote, furthermore, it seems to me, and maybe P4 as well, that the powers that be are doing it as planned, keeping the short contracts at ridiculous high levels while at the same time buying up miners. How can the miners make these giant gains if the metals price stays so much lower percentage-wise? Easy peasy. The big boys don't care. Sometime in the future, when they have enough longs in their dark pools, they will cover their shorts and let the spot prices run. Thus you have what I call the Murphy two-step. Spot price suppression through absurdly huge short interest, 150% of total worldwide yearly mine and silver supply at one point. For the COMEX alone, a single exchange leveraged something like 300 to 1 paper to paper to actual physical if memory serves while gobbling up mining shares then watch the magic of leverage work in your favor when those shorts are covered price is allowed to run and whatever losses are incurred are repaid tenfold by the rise in your now massive mining stock positions tinfoil hat yeah probably i'm sure that powerful interests with the means the motive the opportunity and the get out of jail free cards that come with certain connections wouldn't dream in an era of zero interest rates and scarce yields of creating a quarter trillion dollar ten bagger for themselves. Nah, that would be illegal. Regardless, what we do have is the makings of a major disconnect as billions of dollars like the Swiss National Bank, etc. are choosing to invest in gold and silver miners. All the while, price continues to be set by the traditional flawed paper derivatives dinosaurs. No matter what the price mechanism or the degree of planning, conspiracy, or free market, one thing seems to be certain. The HIU is the new spot price. Now, I would beg to differ, and I think you can see on this chart uh, a sort of rolling over, but a much better chart is this chart that I brought up at first, the first majestic silver stock chart versus silver. Now, basically what he's proposing is that the powers that be plan to make a lot of money off the mining stocks when they finally let the metals take off. But it also could be the other, the exact opposite, that they plan to make a lot of money shorting the mining stocks when they collapse if they decide to crush the market. Now, I would have to say looking at this chart and just this chart alone, I would have to say that I'm leaning more towards the, the latter scenario. It looks to me like they are planning to bring the miners all the way back down. Now I said many times I don't support buying mining stocks as long as there is a manipulation of precious metal prices. And for me, that's just common sense. You don't invest in something the government is rigging the price of. So if you are a grocer in Venezuela, you make sure that you shut down your business because the government is, it, either they are formally declaring that you can't raise your prices or they are informally forcing you uh, in, in the case of Venezuela, they outright enforce it. In the case of um, precious metals in the U.S., they do it in secret. But either way, if the government is forcing you to sell things at lower prices than it costs to produce things, then obviously that's a recipe for bankruptcy. You need to close your doors and move somewhere else. So I am leaning towards a smackdown. Now, let's look at the silver price and do some analysis. The prediction that I had that silver would have a, a pretty big sell-off has, hasn't really come to fruition, although we did get this sell-off here. Let's pull in the volume and put in the arrows. So that was a pretty big one there. You can see we got from 1930 down to 1870. We got about a 60 cent drop and we definitely seem to be rounding down still. So I don't think this thing is over. 
The big question is going to be what happens to those miners if we do get another massive smackdown. Uh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be stacking physical silver. I'm not going to be stacking miners. And we'll talk to you next time.